Hello everybody and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI, which should be right here. In this video we're going to be installing the stringers on the fuselage, so they're quite long as you can see. Probably over 10 feet because I can't stand them up here in the garage. So I got uh, one down each side, pilot and co-pilot side, and I do believe there's one underneath on the bottom, which will be a lot of fun right now because I have it up on the gear. So we'll see what's entailed in this as we get into the instructions. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh yeah, if you haven't already, hit that like button and the subscribe button. Tell your friends and the little bell for notifications so you don't miss, miss out on future videos like this when they come out. So thanks for watching and let's get into the video. All right, cut and file as required the aluminum stringer tubes to fit the fuselage sides as shown. So we can see there's one on each side there. So I'm gonna find the point A, point B, and point C. And then uh, the note over here, it says permanently install the front end of stringer only after door frame installation rivet and bond flush with the door frame flange interface so i think what i'll do is probably get it cut cut to length basically prepped up ready to go and then i will save that portion of the installation until i get the door frame on so again i'll have another completion date that's left open um, but hopefully with the majority of these pieces looks like they get wired to uh, riveted and bonded with some micro balloons and possibly some epoxy. So let's get going. So points A here. Point B is here. Easily identifiable. I have uh, another couple more attachment points back here. Then uh, in the book it shows, looks like it's terminating on a relatively vertical member, but in the back there you can see I have a I have a triangle with a relatively vertical member. I would like it to be maybe this, this piece here, but I'm going to look into that and see what I find. All right, so as you guys can see, the stringer material there are uh, on top of the workbench. There's three of them, and they're pretty long. I think they're about 10 feet long or so. And uh, you'll notice that one of them is shorter than the other one, and that's because I measured very carefully, and I cut it. And that's the piece that I cut off there. All right, so what happened? Cut and file as required the aluminum stringer tubes to fit the fuselage sides as shown. So this one in particular, I had uh, laid out for the co-pilot side of the aircraft. And again, I measured it from point A to point C. With... And when you get back here to C, you've got a round tube meeting another round tube. So basically you have to cope out end of your stringer. Of course, since I measured from here to there and once I started coping and then I coped on the on the end of A, I came up short. So I don't believe this is a structural member of the aircraft. I believe it's there for a, a bearing surface when I put fabric over it. So another phone call that I have to make to Brandon. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this stringer to the airplane so you can see what I've got laid out. Um, I do have it all marked. I've got it marked and drilled right now um, where, it, where it touches the points on the fuselage. Probably can't see that. Maybe there you can. I've um, got them drilled out. So I'll clamp it up to the airplane and then uh, we'll see We'll see what my tolerances are, how far off I am, and uh, maybe we'll scuff this up and, and put some 9460 on there. So let's get into that. All right, here's the stringer clamped to the fuselage. And what you do is you measure between this point back here, this point up here, and then like I said, my measurement was tight up here where I'm short. But once I started coping this back end out, basically that started to allow the, the tube to extend past this framing member, making that end shorter up front. So. I did think I did a pretty good job on the coping there. However, while I was doing that great job on the coping, I shorted myself up top. So, got these drilled out. Just getting ready to scuff those up, prep them, and then I'll throw the high saw on there. That one you can't see because the clamp is on there. This one. So up here, I think I'm 
Probably just going to high saw it in place, clamp it, and I was thinking about, since I do have a, a little bit of tube left over here, I thought about possibly cutting a, a section off of here, making some notches, maybe four notches, sliding this tube inside the other, high sawing them together. Maybe that would give it a little bit of rigidity and, and allow me to get, get some space to, to stick it to the airplane. So let's see what I do. I might be saved by the bell. I just looked at step 158. Must be performed only after the door frame has been fitted to the fuselage is shown here for reference only and that is right here that's the area where my piece is short I'll take you over here so right here where this guy's short that's not supposed to go in there until I'm putting the door frame on what I'm gonna do is leave that as is I'll just let it stick out where it sticks out naturally I'll epoxy all these and rivet them in place and leave this one till the end so maybe I didn't screw up we'll be scuffing it up with some scotch braid, so I'll do that here in a minute. What rivets do we need? N5, double zero, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And we're gonna need one eighth by one eighth FHAL, which are aluminums. That is letter C. So those are gonna be required when I do put the door frame in. This uh, detail C here in the book. So this gets done once I'm doing the door frames. Right now I'm gonna leave the front of the stringer detached. I'm gonna put an asterisk right here. And see note. Even though there's already a note written over there, sometimes we don't see the forest for the trees. So I've got my aluminum tube, I got my rivets, I got my high saw, I just need to mix them up. Let's do that. So this is one of my favorite parts, mixing up some high saw. microblend back to builders tips where steel and aluminum parts are bonded together the adhesive should be mixed with a small quantity of micro balloons the micro serves to keep the adhesive from completely squeezing out from between the parts ensuring that the dissimilar metals never come in physical contact so I'm gonna mix a small quantity of micro balloons what would a small quantity of micro balloons look like well that stuff is like flour And I'm going to rough up the fuselage. I'm gonna start with this forward one. Up here, I'm just gonna give it a little touches with the scotch Bright. And the book says this gives it some tooth in quotation so that glue has something to stick to. And then when I'm done with this, I'll probably wipe it with some MEK or some denatured alcohol to get any contaminants off there, which could be from my fingers, oil, from my skin. It doesn't take too much to get it scuffed up. You can see the paint scuffs almost immediately once you do this. And I'm going to scuff this back piece back here too where it's going to get safety tied with wire. All right, those are all scuffed. Let's get some alcohol. I got a little denatured alcohol and rag. I'll wipe those off, squeaky clean. Okay. This is the front here, so I'm not going to scuff that up because I'm not gluing it yet. So, so I've scuffed all these other points up. I'm going to grab that denatured alcohol again, clean those up. I'm going to set this back in the fuselage and put a little bit of epoxy on my saddles. All right. Toothpick actually fits. Well, not the toothpick. Popsicle stick seems to fit in there nicely as far as the radius goes. I'm just going to make sure I've got everything covered, all the surface area on the face. And I'm going to do the same on all of these. Okay, the coped end there is our, that's gonna go aft. So I'll take that one to the back of the plane. All right, we'll start down here. Stick that in there. And then I'm gonna stick this very first saddle in. Actually, I'm gonna clamp this one up here first because it is uptight. And then I'll clamp the second one. Keep my holes lined up for my rivets. Clamp the third one right here. Hard to see through me, but here's the uh, post. It's gonna get clamped. I'm just gonna pull it in there nice and tight. Maybe I'll do it. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna go get my rivets and put a rivet in. I think we'll start with this one right here.
Okay, that one goes in, and then there's one that goes in on the bottom, so I'm gonna make sure that I can fit them both in. Okay, they both go in the hole. Um, I should probably put the rivets in the other holes just to make sure everything lines up before I rivet something in place, because the inevitable would tell me that and the rest of them would not fit. So let's move to the next one. Two, four, six, six more rivets. Two, four, six. So I'm gonna take this clamp off and see if my, see if my holes line up. And that rivet goes in. That one also goes in. Next, here, take that off. And put a rivet in. One and two, okay. Next, I could get this camera to just follow me as I moved along. Of course, that one doesn't really want to go in. There we go, got it in there. If I can put the bottom one in. Okay. All right, two, four, six, eight rivets inside their holes. And I'll start with this one up front while I'm up here. Now, when I was drilling these, you have a tendency to want to drill in exactly straight but you can't quite get your riveting tool in there straight. If I would have drilled it straight, I'd be hitting this member up here. So I gotta think ahead with a few other items like this. I have the wrong rivet attachment in there. Let's remedy that very quickly. Swap it out with the 1 8th. I think I was doing 1 16th before that. That's too big. And that one is just right. Snug it up. All right, put the head on there. Make sure that I'm down tight against the metal. Some light pressure. Let it go back down against the head of the rivet. And one down. I'll do the bottom. This is riveting. Two. I'll pick up these shanks as I go. Since I just had to repair a car tire here in the garage, no idea where the screw might have come from. Can't quite see what I'm doing. Let's do this one. One pull on that one. And we'll move down here. This one could be tight. No. All right, eight rivets. All right, for this back piece, which is kind of a sloppy mess right now, I'm supposed to use some .032 wire through the back end. I've got my micro balloons already inside the epoxy. Uh, let me see if I can locate some of that wire. I'm gonna go look in box two, because that seems to be a great place for it. All right, box two was fruitless, so I went to trusty box five, and I found .032 safety wire. So now I'm gonna get my cheater's pliers, I suppose any a and P will look at me and say, don't ever use those. Um, maybe someday I'll know why. But right now, I've got my .032 safety wire and my cheater's pliers, which I got on Amazon, and they're in one of the lists of tools I have listed down below. So I'm gonna run a little bit of this through this hole and out the other side. Take it to the back of the plane. And kind of match them up and clip that off equal with the other piece. Plus or minus 0 0.0623 millimeters. I suppose Twist it over a little bit, maybe once or twice. Pinch it inside the jaws, squeeze it. Okay, squeeze, pull down on this thing. Oh. I'm gonna push this into the position I want it in and give a pull. And probably don't want to pull too much or I'll break the wire. So, since it doesn't really want to stay, I'm going to clamp it in place. I don't want to tighten that up any more than that because it seems like I will probably break the wire. So I'm going to clamp this in place just enough to keep that centered. And maybe I'm not tight enough with my with my pliers and my wire because it looks like that is loose. So I'll put this on the end, squeeze hard, pull this thing down, locks it in place, pull on the end of that, maybe give it a little help. Okay, 
I'm gonna call that good. Those would be great. And your fingers. And I'm gonna put a little bit more epoxy around here because I've got way too much where I shouldn't have it. I think I'm gonna stay off the safety wire and put a little bit on the top. It looks like I have absolutely zero on the bottom. So come around to the bottom and put some in there. And I will try to get the other side. I'm gonna have to move some junk. And a little bit on the safety wire, but I guess if I have to take that off, I'll probably have to cut it because this stuff doesn't really remove. There, that looks not too bad. I would say each epoxy job is unique. You can see how it looks on this side. The safety wire actually looks like a professional did it, thanks to those safety pliers. But the goop needs to go up in there a little bit better. I'll see if I can finesse it with my popsicle stick so it touches the and then I'll, I'll probably get a few popsicle sticks and try to get this off. It doesn't really wipe off, so and I don't want to get it on my fingers because it doesn't come off your fingers for several days either. So anyway, this one I would say is in. Well, let me go get a rag or something and try to clean that up. See if I can capture that on camera because it's so exciting. All right, I'm going to try on this side first with a little bit of paper towel where I overshot the epoxy on the stringers on the horizontal stabilizer. I'm gonna have to, at some point, go back and sand all that down and try to make it smooth. And I bet that's gonna be a fun time. Like I said, it's very hard. That actually looks pretty good there. Try to do something similar on top. It's got a, an abundance extra. And all this extra, I'm sure, just adds weight, which I think for most people would be minuscule, but for the hardcore weight savers, which if I don't have to have an extra weight, I don't want it. So I'll try to clean it up and make it look nice. Okay, that looks pretty decent on this side. Let's we'll see if we can get you up close, personal. As personal as possible. There. How does that look? Not too bad. Let's move on. Thanks for coming back, and if you haven't already done so, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little bell for future notifications so you don't miss out on my build if you're interested. And uh, if you'd like to share it with anybody you know building an airplane, please do so. Thanks very much.